justice activist organizations here in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, so I'm trying to basically, I'm, a, I'm approaching the rhetorical problem of how you translate what is otherwise like a natural. Ah, summer, relaxation, fun in the sun, adventure, and once in a lifetime experiences. But wait, what's missing? You. Power up your summer with five hour energy. Gonna be, it's like it's gonna be really fucking bad. And it's like the fifth so. thousand year flood in like two decades. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's not great. <laughs> it's, it's gonna, yeah. So I'm sure I'm sure that he'd have a lot to say about that because oh, yeah. that's like I, I'm only getting like dispatches. From <laughs> That's what it'll be here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still haven't I still haven't found any wild pawpaw that I've like yeah. tried to make into something edible, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's that's something that I've been thinking about and studying a lot more lately has been like food autonomy and creating like hyper localized systems of like food production and such. Yeah, so yeah. I think that that's probably gonna be like the next wave of this week oh, about no, mandating rooftop farming mm -hmm. um well it's on new construction buildings you either have to do rooftop farming yes wind generation or solar yes and yeah, like yeah, you ha so that. you have to have like something that's contributing to your like overall footprint mm -hmm. on your roof and they're gonna like great i think they're gonna like roll it back on some of the older buildings retroactively too right, so like yeah. it could be really you know you look at china and they have all of that stuff they have like living walls everywhere mm. and it's just uh, to say that it's not like, possible here in america is like just you're yeah. not thinking yeah, <laughs> you're not right. you're not using <laughs> all the resources that we have absolutely yeah just because nabisco wants us to like you know <laughs> cram more risk crackers down our throat or whatever yeah that well that is the difference here right like we are we're hyper corporatized and we're you know we're focused on like okay what are you know what is this going to do to the to the brand if everybody is growing their own food now right and it's yeah. like that's a that's a huge impediment so like when you don't have that you know a bunch of corporations competing against each other you can have green infrastructure and things that you know yeah not to say that i'm like you know a, a maoist or anything like that but you know there are certain affordances <laughs> of having centralized power and that's um, yeah. Omlo's got a little bit of Mao going on with him. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I haven't really been following him all that much. What, is, what has he been up to lately? So he, he just passed, like, these, like, pretty sweeping labor, uh, I don't know. They basically implement labor changes throughout the country mm -hmm. that, you know, mandate certain wages for people and that you have to, I don't know. 
It's I mostly for skilled it. workers, and then it rolls down. Mm-hmm. But I just know that the main thing is that he's uh, trying to disperse some of the civil servant jobs from Mexico City into some of the other areas, mm-hmm. lower employment. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, by having Mexico City, like, so heavily invested in government bureaucracy, it's why they can breed corruption. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Although he he does have, like, the John Oliver airport stuck up. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? Um, there's, like, a giant, they're trying to build a second airport for Mexico City, because the existing one's, like, really leveraged beyond what it's capable of. Gotcha. <laughs> and uh, so they started, like, this ambitious project to, like, you know, develop a new site, and they get halfway through, and yeah. they canceled it. Okay. And uh, so, like, they sunk all the costs into that, and he's like, no, we're going to retrofit this existing airport space mm-hmm. and make it as airport as possible. What, like, would be comparable, but it's okay. not, like, a similar-scale project. Gotcha. They're calling it, like, a, a white elephant, but... Ah, white elephant. Uh, yeah. You know, the airport infrastructure, like, overall, is generally... Yeah, it's just like that. You have to fund hey, the whole country, not like yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm hey man, how are you guys doing? Good. I don't know if we've met before. I'm Alex. Hi, I'm Kurt. Kurt, nice to meet you. What's up, man? It's good to see you here. Yeah, what's your name again? I'm also Alex. Also yeah, Alex. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so <But> I do. <laughs> so, so Mike Laughlin, this time you're gonna have to actually like say the full like the first and the last names for the. Uh, no, like, we're just gonna yeah, interrupt yeah. each other. Alex Albert, yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that should just be a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a bit for the entire thing. <laughs> and he then says Alex, you need both answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We just like, we interrupt each other when we first start trying. Or no, like one person starts. He's like, no. Other Alex. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking to Alex. That could yeah. be good. That could yeah. be good. No, that sounds yeah. funny. Change yeah. your name. <laughs> <laughs> oh I can be God. Lexi for this conversation. <laughs> sure. My cousin. Oh, man. Sexy Lexi. Sexy Lexi. That's your name. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's very good. Okay. We, we checked them already. Damn. You're on top of it today. And the fucking... browser audio check that as well because the one episode that we had it didn't actually play it was playing to people in the room but it wasn't actually like oh. registering on the technical um, difficulties huh ah, yeah life and show business it really is yeah all right everyone ready i think so yeah. piece the door <laughs> See all <you>. masked up <laughs> What are we talking about again today? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I read the Joe email. Biden. <laughs> That's all. Sri Lanka. Just Joe Biden. Yeah. You should go San on like, Diego. You should go on like and a fourth topic. Yes. A Vader <laughs> that last Macho one. Man like. <laughs> Joe Biden. Okay. <laughs> we got challenges. From Washington, the Mike Laughlin Group. The sharpest minds, some really sharp ass minds, the best comb overs, the hardest heads. Thank you for joining us today on the Mike Laughlin Group. We have joining us Alex Helberg, the conquistador. And Alex Schaefer. Hello, friends. We've got some good topics to talk about today, starting with issue one. Third time's a harm. On Thursday, April 25th, former United States Senator and Vice President under Barack Obama, Joe Biden, announced that he has officially begun campaigning for the 2020 Democratic nominations for the presidency. His campaign collected $6.3 million worth of donations on the first day, narrowly edging out the first day totals of candidates Beto O'Rourke and Bernie Sanders. And we've got uh, disapproval being expressed for Joe Biden in the Twitch chat. Uh, But I ask the first question, can Biden win the nomination? I ask you, Alex H., 
that's a question that I think largely is dependent on the rest of the Democratic field in this election. Uh, and so given that context, I think it's very, personally, I think it's very unlikely at this point that we're going to see Biden come out. I mean, he has a strong lead, or a, well, I shouldn't say a strong lead. He has, he's high in the polls right now, I think largely because of his name recognition. He hasn't really stated a whole lot of positions on almost anything yet. But if his voting record is any, uh, is any indication, he is running up against uh, you know, some very progressive Democrats, um, social Democrats as well. Uh, and I think it's going to be a tough race for him. So honestly, I think he is going to either have to move left or get out of the way. Did you see him on The View? I didn't, actually. I saw him posing with Meghan McCain in, in what you know, was kind of a ridiculous photo op that you know, probably, again, doesn't really look great for him in terms of he's trying to draw up Democratic support. But. Uh, well, you know how Democrats feel about getting Republican votes. And Meghan McCain, the Meghan McCain vote, is with Joe Biden right now. Alex, does he have, Alex uh, S, does he have what it takes to win the nomination? Yeah, I think he has to be considered the out and out favorite so far in this election. Like you said, it's his third time around. He's an experienced candidate. He's got the great resume that, you know, the party centrists love and that they, you know, the party people are going to push for. So he's very popular with older Americans. He's definitely a continuity candidate. Uh, Alex, we're, uh, we've got the Twitch chat saying that you're very quiet. If you could hold oh. your mic closer when you speak. Thank you. Uh, uh, conquistador. Why? Tell me why these guys are wrong. <laughs> Who'd Joe Biden ever beat? Mike Laughlin? Nobody. Joe Biden's Nobody. Anybody. He's run for president. This will be his third time, and he's lost every single time. You know who they should nominate for president? Hulk Hogan. That's Hulk, a winner. Hulk Hogan. Former Terry Bollea. champion. Yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, Joe Biden stinks. He's never gotten more than 0.2% of the total primary vote. Uh, he's I, dropped if I get out after Iowa. percent of my job, I don't get a reward for it. No. I mean, if no, you, I get fired. Especially if you work for Amazon. Yeah. Joe Biden is terrible. Don't Joe Biden me. is the last person that the Democratic Party should should nominate, but he is the out and out favorite in anything that oh, he fuck. does Hold up. other Hold up. than win. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, all right. I fixed the mic thing. Uh, thank you, Twitch chat. Quit playing to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the mics are fixed. All right, Alex, go for it. Yeah. Why are we nominating Joe Biden? Why, why is that even being explored right now? Because this is something that I've said is going to ha already happen, but we know that it's – Joe Biden is the most problematic candidate in American politics today. From his unsolicited touching of women to his ongoing support for an alienation of boomers over millennials, it's just something that's not electable. Mm. It's not something that's going to end up in – it's not going to end up with the result the Democratic Party wants. You're making a pretty strong case for Joe Biden now. <laughs> some, some things I hadn't thought of before. Uh, I apologize. He's also done a great job of keeping drugs off our streets. Oh, God. Apologize for the audio issues. Let's just do a quick live check here. Uh, I'm going to. No one can hear what I'm saying. Look at my. Okay. Uh, go ahead and check, Alex. This is a mic check. I can't hear it. Okay. Uh, you it. Hello. Hello. Check, check. One, two, one, two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Check, check. One, two, one, two. We also stream is wrong. All right. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know. Have you tried turning on the volume on your computer? <laughs> there's, a little, there's a little button right down on the on your keyboard. Yeah. So just you press it a few times. The slider should go up plug in your speakers <laughs> so what are the issues that joe biden's going to focus on to separate him from the rest of the pack a return to normalcy the return to the dignity of the republican party <laughs> and a continuity of the neoliberal policies that slowly tighten the noose of fascism around the necks of americans joe biden fascist I agree, Alex. <laughs> I agree, too. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he's explicitly stating the only piece of campaign uh, promotion that we have from him right now is the speech that he gave at the uh, Comcast executive's house, uh, as well as his appearance on The View and his, um, his campaign uh, promotion or his, his announcement video in which he 
played a uh, B-roll of the uh, Tiki Torch March in Charlottesville and said, this is bad. This is bad. We need to we need to go back to when America wasn't like this. So honestly, you I mean, think it's, it's not bad. I <laughs> No, I agree with him on that front, but I think if that's our if that's the baseline starting points that we want from our nominee to just say this is bad and this is all that we're running on, um, I think we can do better than that. I think we can take it a step further. Is there a candidate in the Democratic field that would say that that is not bad? Mm. There's 18 candidates, but I don't know that there's any like diversity of opinion among Democrats. No, that's true. And maybe so Pete. And- maybe Mayor Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Conquistador, what do you think he's going to be focusing on? I heard he's going to try to get uh, nationwide discounts for denture cream. <laughs> nice. Because he's, That's going to play well. He's a very old man. He's fucking old. He is, uh, <laughs> he is, he is an 85-year-old haircut. True, true. He had hair plugs, and we all know that. Um, so Biden ran twice before, once in the 80s and then in 2008. Uh, and the, he dropped out of the race in the 80s because it was, uh, it came out that he plagiarized some of his uh, law school shit. Was it law school shit? Yeah. And yeah, he plagiarized was, speeches that he was giving. That's right. Yeah. There speeches. was the one that was, yeah, he replaced the name of whoever it was who was, it was something about like being from a working class family or something like that. He literally just replaced the entire th- Dusty the, Rhodes, I think. <laughs> it was yeah. Dusty. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Speechwriter Dusty. Uh, and then this the pa- this past <laughs> 2008 election, uh, he dropped out after Iowa, finishing behind the choice uh, undecided. <laughs> so suddenly, because he's got name recognition, he's the front runner. But I indecision think is better than Joe Biden. Yeah, don't count out undecided. Undecided, I heard, is going to be popular this year. I think so. Yeah. And we touched on this a little bit. What concerns do Democratic primary voters have, have about Biden? Uh, on the left and uh, in the center, where it's going to be his wheelhouse, what issues do, do people have with him? Conquistador? Well, Joe Biden is responsible for helping get this terrible Obamacare Act passed. He Very has true. so many. Uh, he's been on the wrong side of so many issues uh, that he he's been he's been wrong so often that both the left and the right disagree with him. <laughs> he's Very just true. always wrong. <laughs> he's a wrong man in my eye as well. Singular, uh, Alex H. Yeah. So I think he's. <laughs> He's got he's got a lot to contend with from as I was saying before the the Democratic Party is is a different Democratic Party than it was in 2008. I think he's going to be getting a lot of pressure from a more progressive uh, left flank of the party. I think it's telling that he announced in the same week that uh, two uh, policies were discussed that are actually pretty pretty progressive. Uh, from Elizabeth Warren, we had uh, you know her announcement of uh, college debt uh, cancellation or debt relief, uh, as well as some proposals for free college, and as well you had Bernie Sanders mentioning. Uh, allowing prisoners to vote, uh, which again, probably not not progressive enough in my mind. Abolish prisons, uh, but in in large parts, uh, these are things that he these are things that he has actively gone against in his policy record. He has made it more difficult for people to find relief from their student loans through his passage of his you know uh, through uh, the barring of uh, bankruptcy. Um, measures that would help people take relief from their debt uh and as well he's signed into law you know crime bills that have uh, led to mass incarceration so he is largely perpetuating a lot of the issues and he largely i would argue created a lot of the issues that current democrats are fighting against so i think he's got a lot of ground to to recoup if i'm being honest and he originally ran on uh, opposing busing for uh diversity alex what right. do you think so in addition to what alex said um, I think that just to continue, he is endorsing a regressive foreign policy that led to the invasion of Iraq twice. Um, he his problem with race relations and the the movements for you know not raping women. He's not good on that issue with the Anita Hill scandal, and it's just every single issue in American politics that we can trace from the mass incarceration of minorities to student loan debt everything 
that's strangling the middle class in America right now that he says he's devoted to restoring is not achievable because he doesn't present policy differences like a candidate like Warren does. And it's it's not going to end up well for him. Warren has already said that Joe Biden uh, is on the side of the credit card companies. Delaware Joe. Delaware Joe. Yeah. Uh, this question was for Democratic primary voters. So, Conquistador, I'm sure you don't care about that. Not at all. Uh, so but he we'll does poll well <laughs> among those likely voters. So he's going to yes. maintain high polling numbers. He's going to look great among corporate donors to the Democratic Party. And he's going to be able to you know, keep churning out those single day and opening week fundraising numbers, setting records and keeping pace with Bernie and Beto because he has that corporate backing. Uh, Conquistador, what do you think about... Uh, LSD. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I'm not a hippie, <laughs> so oh, I don't do LSD. Just a little prompt from the chat there. I just uh, drink. <laughs> drink. Next, <against> delicious <laughs> alcoholic sparkling beverages. <laughs> that's very. That's very manly. In Iron that's City, <laughs> that's the drug of the bourgeois, which I am part of. <laughs> Proudly. Issue two. Easter terror in Sri Lanka. On Easter Sunday, Wahhabist Islamic militants in Sri Lanka carried out a coordinated wave of suicide bombings against three Christian churches and three luxury hotels across the island nation, killing at least 253 and injuring at least 500. Saturday, Sri Lankan President Maithripala Sirisena exercised his emergency powers to ban two organizations suspected in planning the bombings. One such group, National Thawid Jamath, has been suspected in the past of ties to Saudi Arabia and their effort to spread Wahhabism, an extreme form of Islam that rejects all other beliefs. Members of the Islamic State have claimed resp responsibility for the attack. Does this show that ISIS has not been beaten? Uh, conquistador. Well, as you know, Mike Laughlin, I am a decent, God-fearing Christian. I go to church every single Sunday with my whole family, all the little conquistadors. And I have uh, to say that I am shocked and Catholic, offended. Catholic, I'm assuming. Yes, yes, of course. Or, well, well, white, From Mexico. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Um, <laughs> white Anglo-Saxon Protestant yeah. Catholic. <laughs> Wasp. <laughs> Wasp. 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 It, it's you know you know it, it's 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 new. It's um, new. Two services every Sunday. <laughs> That's right. Our More service, church. There are services every single day, and I go to all of them. But uh, what were we talking about? Uh, oh oh yeah. Uh, I guess ISIS. Uh, ISIS. I mean yeah. It's, uh, ISIS is definitely irresponsible for this, or something like ISIS. I'm not quite sure. They change names every now and again, but the same thing matters. Is that Christianity is under attack? Agree. Christianity under attack. Alex. Yeah, Has Islamic State been beaten? Um, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, there, there has been an official defeat declared by, uh, you know, both the, uh, both the Syrian army as well as uh, President Trump and others. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, ISIS is largely, you know, I think it's important to view this as being, you know, I mean, ISIS is kind of another iteration of like a right wing apocalyptic death cult, right? <laughs> like, I mean, this is looking to... Uh, it's 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 either you know bringing about their sort of religious fundamentalist view of the world or nothing or you know we all get to die. So I mean it's uh, they are largely decentralized. I think it's you know while there might be you know some kind of center of power that may have been uh, that may have been either defeated or may have been disempowered. Um, largely you know this is a this is a uh, an organization that exists in the age of the internet. So they are largely decentralized. Uh, they have the ability to kind of claim credit for a lot of different attacks because people are just operating under that sort of ideological heading, right? So I don't think that they're necessarily beaten yet. I think that maybe even using the calculus of uh, whether something is beaten or not is not really even appropriate to talk about an organization like ISIS. It's whether they are, you know, kind of empowered or disempowered. Uh, and I think that they are still, you know, being empowered uh, in various ways, and we can maybe talk about why that is. They're more of an idea, you're saying, yes. than a concrete 
tangible organization. Yeah, I mean, which some of that does yeah. exist. Yes, yeah, they're they're both to an extent, but yeah, they're it's it's more complex than just our traditional what we would traditionally think of as a terrorist organization. You're not just joining ISIS. You get an ISIS card. <laughs> And you go to ISIS meetings. That's not. A you thing. go to your ISIS potluck. No, it's it's not. It doesn't work like that. You get your bag of meth. Yeah. <laughs> or you get discounts with cot. an ISIS card. Cot. Do they do cot? cot? In certain parts of the world. All sorts of amphetamines. Man, I love me some cot. Uh, <laughs> what? Did I say? Did I say that on mic? <laughs> I did. I didn't what hear What are the parallels uh, with this Jamath? Uh, what's it called? Thawweed. Uh, th- uh, Thawweed Jamath National Thawweed Jamath What are the parallels? Uh, Abu Sayyaf In Philippines Boko Haram I, I think that ISIS in its current form Is just going to leverage The capabilities Of local terrorist organizations And you know Groups that find uh, Purchase within the Similar overlapping ideologies There's just um, They're going to continue To operate in the Decentralized manner That they have been for years and this is the continued evolution of a a group that's gone through many changes from al-qaeda to the br- various breakoff sectors into isis which is going to break off into more branches and more decentralizations and you know the leadership that exists within isis may not even be directly responsible for these sri lanka attacks but they're going to you know claim they're going to get the pr bump from whatever attacks that take place because these were extremely high profile. They targeted Westerners and they um, really, you know, hit at the softest targets possible in a country that wasn't prepared for them, despite ample warning. Conquistador, uh, what's Saudi Arabia's role in this? Are they playing a role? I don't know. No, I, they have. So Saudi Arabia was behind the 9-11 attacks. So one can assume that if this is all interrelated, that they are somewhere to be uh, at, at some kind of dark leadership position on some some level. Dark leadership position. Wow. So yeah, it's getting a little funding in this dark. Well, no, not, not <laughs> funding in this dark as in dark as in bad, light as in good. Right. You know, right. So nothing. Li- nothing racial about that at all. Nothing. Uh. Spreading Wahhabism, uh, we've seen. Uh, I like you putting words in my mouth. <laughs> Goddamn liberals. <laughs> seen Boko Haram and Abu Sayyaf pledge, uh, pledge their uh, allegiance to Abu Bakir Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, uh, or the nominal leader of ISIS. Uh, does this kind of violent islamic extremism stop without uh a change in our relationship with saudi arabia alex h uh i think i think you're raising a good point uh and that is and and it's important to remember uh the uh the felicitous relationship that the u.s does have with saudi arabia that gets us kind of mired in these conflicts where we're fighting both sides of a, of a war. This is what we saw happening in Syria, where, you know, different arms of the uh, American uh, military industrial complex, as well as the intelligence community, were basically supporting both sides. We were supporting the Assad regime, as well as uh, the Syrian rebels, you know, and, and ISIS uh, through different through different channels. So I think that I do think that there does need to be a fundamental shift in uh, U.S. support for Saudi Arabia that could uh, make a material difference in this because we do we do funnel a lot of resources to Saudi Arabia that does have a, that does play a role in materially supporting groups like this. And at the same time, is you know acknowledging that we need to move away from supporting Saudi Arabia as a as a country by purchasing their oil. Um, we're going the opposite direction in terms of policy. Last week, uh, Iranian oil was sanctioned by several countries led by the u.s so i don't think that the the way that our foreign policy goals are shifting towards you know exacerbating the tensions that exist between saudi arabia and iran that this is only going to ultimately lead to them funding more wahhabist extremism and i know what you think about that conquistador you don't like any sort of non-christian extremism exactly christian extremism only I uh, only only the right kind of extreme. Oh God. 
I mean, that that hits out at everything that you you really believe against. I mean, we're getting away from Texas oil, and you know. Yeah, that's right. Right. Only American oil. Open up the Arctic for drilling. <laughs> exactly. Drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby. Issue three. White nationalist terror continues. Saturday in Poway, California, in the San Diego area, a 19-year-old attacker opened fire on members of the Shabbat of Poway Synagogue during a Passover celebration. The act of terror left one dead and three injured. San Diego County Sheriff William Gore identified the shooter as an adult white male carrying an AR style semi-automatic rifle. The attacker posted an eight-page manifesto prior to the shooting, professing pride for his European ancestry while expressing his hatred of Jewish people. The attack took place six months after a white nationalist terrorist opened fire on congregants of Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, killing 11. Can anything be done to curb these attacks? Alex S. Um, one thing that can be done is that we can return to a focus of law enforcement in our country towards, you know, these lone wolf domestic terrorist cases. Uh, the focus has really been on, you know, foreign based terrorism and how that can affect life here in America. So that's one tangible thing that we can do. And I hate to really, you know, endorse the escalation of an issue within law enforcement circles, but that's really the only thing that we can do right now. Otherwise, you know, we're just continue as a society to throw our hands up in the air and wring our hands every time this happens. I don't, well, so. Other Alex. Yeah, so so I do, I, I agree that there are things that we can do. I, I would, uh, I would say I would maybe push against the I, I, I share your skepticism of of uh, of involving you know material support for law enforcement just because that could of course be then marshaled against uh, other forms of you know what we might keep be what we might consider like legitimate activist organizations and things like that. There's a long history of uh, of that sort of brand of terrorism getting misapplied to activist organizations on the left and other you know progressive causes. But I do think that there is definitely something that can be done uh, to the extent that uh, we have people in the media or politicians who are willing to speak up and sanction the uh, basically far right uh, talking heads in both the media and in politics who are currently perpetuating the systems of belief that is motivating a lot of these shooters, right? Like and, a, and that unspoken belief is white supremacy. Yes. The belief that yes. it's acceptable to have anti-Semitic beliefs and act upon those beliefs because it's unacceptable absolutely the the phrase uh one of the phrases that got uttered as you know kind of being to blame for well or that the shooter uh named in their manifesto about uh you know why they were doing this was the prevalence of cultural marxism which is a huge anti-semitic dog whistle that has sort of re-emerged uh, recently i know on your last week's show mike laughlin you talked about uh jordan peterson as somebody yes. who has brought up the trope of cultural marxism in the past so people like him people like ben shapiro Hero, who will, uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, double down and say, no, this is, you know, the real anti-Semitism is institutionalized left-wing anti-Semitism, uh, you know, in in line with, you know, Islam uh, or Islamic anti-Semitism. When, again, it's important to contextualize that, you know, the not just uh, this uh, this this person who carried out this crime, but also. The Tree of Life shooter was explicitly both anti-Semitic and Islamophobic. Uh, this person I get, is also being investigated for uh, for the arson of a or the attempted arson of a of a mosque uh, in Escondido, I think it was, uh, or somewhere else in the San Diego suburb. In addition, Robert Bowers, uh, the uh, Tree of Life shooter, um, explicitly attacks the Tree of Life because of their material support for refugees uh, and immigrants from other countries. So the I mean, the Hebrew yes. immigrant aid society, precisely. Yeah. So I think it's important to not let not let people, you know, on the right reframe this and try to cover their own asses for it, because they are in many cases, you know, responsible for perpetuating the ideologies of these people. And I think we need to hold them to account for that. So while Ben Shapiro is saying, do not name the shooter. Yes. Ben Shapiro has blood on his hands once again. Yes. I'm sorry. Did Ben Shapiro carry out the shooting? 
this past weekend? I don't. I don't Let think me that see. He didn't. Check your notes, Mike Laughlin. Well, we talk about putting words into people's mouth. He put probably put the it words cultural Marxism into the. Into oh, the no, he, he, oh, he didn't. Oh, so I don't understand how he had blood on his hands unless he had cut himself shaving earlier in the day. So, so I'm not quite sure. To go back just a little bit, uh, we all condemn the spread of Wahhabism and the ideology that goes into spurning, you know, terrorists abroad. But that's Muslim. We have those same people acting here in America and in Canada with Jordan Peterson Jordan, Ben Shapiro, all of these radical right-wing fringe ideologies that are ideologies that are inserting themselves into the mainstream culture through, you know, the whitewashing of the Daily Wire being a legitimate news outlet that's fact-checking for Facebook. It's it's all taking over the the media and the rhetoric. Just us knowing cultural Marxism as the disgusting, you know, smear that it is as uninvolved people it's uh, it's taking over this is the noose of fascism once again yes that's all the more reason to subscribe to bullet and barrel magazine that is honest journalism at its finest bullet and barrel straight shooting (laughs) that's that's on the cover how'd you know are you a subscriber (laughs) maybe editorial independence from bullet and barrel magazine (laughs) Uh, independence of every kind from bullet and barrel that's right patriotism (laughs) it's a patriotic publication is the government doing enough uh to prevent this kind of attack uh alex s so to the extent that they're failing to combat white supremacy no no they're not this is something that our president actively stokes those uh those tensions every day and it's something that is not sustainable for america to have as a culture you know the insidiousness of one sector of white culture believing in the supremacy over all other people is patently disgusting. Not doing enough then. Conquistador, is the government doing enough to prevent these kinds of attacks? Should the government do anything? Uh, I believe the less the government does, the better. That's always my belief. I, I think the people should be responsible for policing these things and making sure that, that this kind of incident doesn't happen again. Well, so to that extent, I mean, I think that like like focusing on what's not just people, but also, you know, maybe private corporations could be doing. Right. So, for example, a corporation like Twitter that has a large role in, you know, amplifying and circulating discourse that might, you know, uh, encompass some of these uh, some of the anti-Semitic rhetoric that is, you know, being uptaken by uh, by these shooters. Uh, there was a recent article in Vice where they talked about uh, or there was a, an anonymous Twitter employee basically came forward and said, we don't treat white nationalist or white supremacist discourse on Twitter the same as we would ISIS propaganda, which they have, you know, according to their you know inside sources they've effectively sort of eliminated that from the platform through you know through algorithms and things like that the reason that they couldn't do it apparently for uh, white supremacist discourse is because that would deplatform a lot of gop politicians uh, so i would Ooh. encourage you to look up that article uh and yeah again that i think is proof that you know this is something that is deeply ingrained into our institutions that they could be doing something about it's uh you know private companies could but it's probably not a part of their bottom line uh you know to be it's it's probably not in their interest. So there's one simple way that we could uh, have private companies address this issue, and that's to uh, overturn the court ruling that says that you cannot sue gun manufacturers for the, you know, crimes and the damages that their weapons cause. Whoa, 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 whoa. NRA member, Conquistador. Guns do not kill people. People kill people. People with guns kill people. Insane people with guns kill people we need to do more to get the insane people off of the streets and back to wherever they belong where they can be insane so how does the government what if we use wi-fi enabled weapons and <laughs> fingerprint trigger locks so that the gun industry can recoup their losses that they'll have to pay to shooting victims do you have to tweet to shoot is that how that works you, you, you tweet tweet a gun i think shoot? if you i think if you tweet that you intend on committing a mass atrocity your gun is automatically disabled from, you know, the invisible hand of the government. Nanny state. Uh, so and this backdoor is enabled in all Wi-Fi enabled guns as a feature because you get to share your location and tell people how well you're shooting. You can check uh, in on Foursquare with your gun. I don't know what any of those things mean, but I am sure that this you're infringing synergy. on my this freedoms. This is vertical integration. 
to own a weapon. That's in the Constitution. Yeah, yeah. Do- Second Amendment says fuck Wi-Fi. Do uh, let's let's back up for a. St- <laughs> I remember when Thomas Jefferson wrote that. Exactly. <laughs> let's back up for a second. Uh, we we're, were talking about Twitter. Uh, what does the government? What does it look like? The government stepping in to get a hold of this is is it FCC rulings? Uh, what would that look like? Anyone can take this if they want. FCC rulings for racism on Twitter and expressing a, a harmful ideology? Well, if the government is going to uh, regulate Twitter, then it would have to be through the FCC, right? I mean, it'd have to be similar to what took place with network television over the years. Do we really want to impose that standard on, you know, a social media platform is diverse and, you know, all I don't want Twitter? it. Exactly. I think I well agree. just to step in I don't I don't think it would be necessarily uh you know out of line because again let's call these what they are these are these are pogroms like these are you know this is explicitly like you know terrorist violence committed against a you know an ethnic uh, and religious group in this country I think that this is you know like this could be grounds for like a truth and reconciliation commission to oh, be honest Oh absolutely yes. and one day it will be yes. once we realize I think the harm so. that Facebook yeah. and Twitter have done to our society as a whole there's going to have to be some process where we all come to terms with it and accept that it's broken the brains of Americans all yes. across our country. Who's going to be our Desmond Tutu? Oof. Is it Mark Zuckerberg's second daughter, Zoe? <laughs> I don't know Perhaps. that that person exists. Ken- is it Kendrick Lamar? <laughs> no. I mean, I thought it was going to be Nipsey Hussle, but we saw what Mark Zuckerberg did there. Damn. True. Uh, I don't R. know R. what who Nipsey Hussle is because I'm old. Are we fatigued talking about firearm safety? Uh, have we hit sort of a dead end? When I'm fatigued to talking issue? about it I'm because sure. firearms already come with the necessary safety features that you need to keep them safe. I have with my children. I keep my firearms safe on top of the refrigerator. They can't reach up there. So I know that they will not get them. It's called a safety liberals. I know you don't know that much about exactly. guns. Exactly. Liberals don't know anything about guns. They already come with a feature called the safety. <laughs> safety. So we, we did it's have a Arma period. Light. Right. Arma Light. <laughs> we did have a period in American history, and not so long ago in the 90s, when Arma Light rifles of the type that were used in the most recent shooting were outright banned in America. And we didn't have these type of shootings occurring every day. And... Gun sales weren't materially harmed as much as we thought they would be. I mean, we're at record levels of gun sales basically quarter over quarter now. We don't even have Obama in office anymore to, you know, stoke the fear of Americans that they're going to have their guns taken away. We thought that this was all going to come to a critical mass in the wake of, you know, Mm -hmm. Sandy Hook and the shootings that took place in Florida. And it's just it's not resulted in any material policy action, despite the acts of, you know, parents like Fred Gutenberg, you know, going on tour to, you know, lay out the very real tangible harm that this has on people's lives. And some states have actually uh, repealed some of their gun laws. uh, Florida is only becoming more radical with what you can do with a gun in public. The stand your ground law is being, uh, you know, it's overturning shooting deaths across across the state. It's getting people out of out of really ridiculous stitch situations that should have never been escalated to the use of a, a weapon. I mean, I don't know if any of you have seen the shooting at taking place outside a convenience store where a, a man comes to confront another man yelling at his wife in the parking lot, and the man immediately turns around shoots a person and gets to claim that he was standing his ground self-defense in public though not there's no castle doctrine at play here this is escalating you know the use of force um, from citizens to other citizens in our country uh are we fatigued talking about firearm safety anyone else want to take this one uh conquistador you already said you're Mm -hmm. you're tired of it you don't want to hear it anymore you're right okay uh issue four then My intern told me that there's a popular television show 
So I don't get this. Game of subpoenas. I, I like Matlock, personally. <laughs> oh, there's a good murder she wrote on later. Dragnet. Yeah. I've seen all the murder she wrote, I know. Thursday, President Trump vowed to fight all the subpoenas issued by Congress, including requests from Congress and the IRS to hand over tax returns. The White House also seeks to fight Congress's efforts to acquire an unredacted version of Mueller's investigative report. The executive branch's refusal will likely lead to a lengthy court battle that could end up in the nation's highest court, the Supreme Court. Is the administration hiding something? Alex S. I mean, they're only hiding the, you know, six to ten acts of obstruction of justice that, you know, have been routinely demonstrated as being evidence in the Mueller report. It's it's something that we're going to have to come to terms with as a country if we pursue impeachment in Congress and whether that's going to be a Democratic objective in the next 18 months before the election. Is Trump hiding something, conquistador? Donald Trump t tweets every thought that he has. <laughs> How in the world could he be hiding anything? I mean, he he's, he's the most readily available and transparent president that we've ever had. And thanks to that behavior, we're actually able to prove uh, several examples of obstruction of justice. Well, I due mean, to conflicting statements. Well, I mean, right? you, I mean, it, 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 that didn't go through the proper channels. Anything that he says on there can't be held truly reliable. Toilet tweets don't uh, count. Exactly. I mean, th just like the thoughts you have on the toilet are clearly uh, obstructing your your thinking process. Like if you're really going at it, bowel on, obstruction on of that justice. Throne, yeah, and you're just like <laughs> you know, in, I I know I know Donald's diet isn't great, so I'm sure he spends a lot of time in, in on the toilet so he's probably like you know working real hard and also also like you know really hard working time. yeah 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 and he also you know typing out his manifesto and sometimes sometimes facts can be skewed that he doesn't have people double checking his tweets you know it's it, it's not not relevant constipation is a side effect of propecia bowel obstruction of justice just had to put that one in there i will edit it out it is <laughs> disrespectful to our president absolutely that's disgusting <laughs> is they allow this on twitch that kind of that kind of talk sorry yeah tos sorry. well I'll which have... is not under the fcc umbrella of oversight if i didn't have to it's ridiculous if i wasn't in the hole so much for my expensive <laughs> scalp surgery then i would pay some moderators to make sure that that kind of thing doesn't get through the <laughs> airwaves. Your scalp looks great, Mike Laughlin. Thank you. It does. I'm sorry, Mike Laughlin. It was a very expensive surgery. Uh, so, so is the Trump administration hiding something, Alex H., do you think? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that they that they probably are. I mean, uh, to quote Trump himself, uh, you know, from the Mueller report, uh, you know, I'm I'm fucked. Um, so I think he he did say he was fucked. He did say he was fucked. So I think he knows that he's that he's maybe in trouble for something. Uh, at the same time, I, I'm I'm still kind of skeptical about the whole like chasing after his tax returns and the whole like the Mueller reports being this sort of nail in the coffin for for Donald Trump. And I think that it's largely because I I'm just thinking of it from like a harm reduction perspective which is you know would we rather have uh, a big doofus in the office who you know while he says a lot of really ignorant stuff really doesn't you know couldn't accomplish what like a Mike Pence presidency could in terms of like doing actual like a lot of a, a lot of, I shouldn't say actual much worse harm uh, to other people and you know minorities and, uh, and and queer folks so so I think that you know we should we should be very cognizant about like what an actual like you know we're talking about impeachment proceedings what would that actually gain uh, for the american people i think it's probably better to uh just you know ride out this term and then you know like nail him to the wall once he's not the president anymore exactly this is the democrats pursuing impeachment is the most harmful thing they could do to their chances in the 2020 election yes it would solidify trump's strong voting base his support among older Americans. It would alienate the younger Americans that are seeking impeachment against the older voting class. And that's not, those are two things that we don't want to happen as Democrats. The best thing that they can do is to pursue a very similar strategy to what Mitch McConnell did during Obama's uh, presidency. And that's 
obstruct away, take the take a knee on this presidency, run out the clock on these 18 months, get to the next term, and really hope things that work out for you in the 2020 election. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at four more years where – you know, Trump's going to act with impunity. If he wins a second election, he's going to take that as a mandate, regardless of what the electoral map looks like and whether he loses the pop- popular vote again. So you're saying that uh, if the Democrats follow Trump's numerous red herrings, they're playing into a trap. I, I mean, it's a trap that is only going to be, you know, enabled by whatever degree Democrats jump in with both feet uh, into the trap. You know, it's only going to damage them as far as they allow it. Pursuing impeachment's a lofty goal, and in terms of stripping a president of his its power, ending up with Mike Pence doesn't get us any further towards the progressive policy goals that Democrats seek. Exactly. If I, that's what they're seeking. Yes, that's true, too. I like the idea of these traps. You think we can capture, like, Elizabeth Warren in a cage of some sort? You know, like, put, like, a uh, 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 a copy of uh, Jacobin in a, in a box and have her go and walk over and look at it and uh, just Pungies. trap her. Punchies sticks. P- pun- oh, oh, uh, that's a little violent. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, whatever you have to do. You have to uh, sprinkle it with birdseed. Birdseed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Put, like, a, um, I don't know, like a bran muffin, gluten-free, uh, in the... Uh, and the thing, and that's, and you just like capture a bunch of these, uh, these no good libs who are, are trying to trying to impinge on democracy and, and steal freedom. our red herrings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Acme Arms Company is also a sponsor of Bullet and Barrel magazine. That's right. Yeah. Bullet and Barrel. Great, great special on anvils. <laughs> are the Democrats abusing their congressional powers? Conquistador, yes. I'll give you this one. Yes. <laughs> I don't need more of an answer than that, personally. <laughs> Alex H? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I won't say anything too much new. They I mean, already I, lost! <laughs> I don't think they're abusing their powers, certainly. I don't think that they would be, uh, necessarily. They, that's a whole different subset of the conversation. I just don't think it's worth their while right now. No, they're not abusing their power, and any suggestion that they are is undemocratic. Yeah. This has been done before. I mean, that's I mean, impeachment proceedings is something that is laid out in our in like the foundations of our of our country and, you know, in the Constitution. So so to say that it would be an abuse of power is is, I think, misleading uh, at best. And I expect to see all the ghouls from the Clinton impeachment proceedings reappearing on the air in the next few weeks here yes. to, uh, you know, condemn the practices that took place in the 90s against the Democrat, but are now threatening to take place in our current times against a Republican president. Lindsey Graham changes his tune completely. Uh, the videos of him talking about Bill Clinton's impeachment uh, and what he says now are two sides of a different coin. <laughs> but Trump's face is on both coins because... Oh, they should put Trump's face on a coin. Better yeah. yet, all the dollars. One, the $2 bill... You think of that side profile. Trump dollar is what he sought to get by nominating Herman Cain to the Fed. The side profile, you can't beat it. What a legacy. (laughs) Will the imbalance in the Supreme Court help Trump if this court battle goes all the way uh, to the Supreme Court? Uh, Those are mostly Bush or Trump appointees. Do we see... uh, does this does that help him? If yeah. The fight goes all the way to the Supreme Court. And Democrats have to take that into consideration. If this is something that makes its way to the Supreme Court, it's not going to be ruled on in their favor. So they have to act accordingly in their strategy. I agree. There's there's a lot of partisans on the court right now, and I think that it would be a strategic misstep uh, to to hand that over to them because I think it would you know inevitably end up there, and that's something that would work uh, not in their favor. None of the Supremes are never Trump. Republicans. Not, not Diana Ross. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Diana Ross? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when was she on the Supreme Court? <laughs> well, the inbound. No, the <laughs> Supreme. <laughs> the Supreme. That was a joke. <laughs> it was good. It was good. I'm sorry. I, I don't listen. Slow on the uptake. You know, I don't listen to black music. <laughs> <laughs> Will the imbalance help Trump in the Supreme Court? Conquistador. There are a lot of honest, uh, smart, and dedicated people on that Supreme Court who will help find the truth 
and uh, and find out what's right, and that Donald Trump is There are is innocent. three but honest, dedicated people on the Supreme Court, and there's a bunch of people that just also no, show up for four. work. Alito, four. Gorsuch, <laughs> uh, and Roberts, <laughs> the honest ones, right? Let's not, let's not forget about uh, uh, epi- epic Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Kavanaugh? Is Ruth Bader Ginsburg your spirit animal, Alex? That, that's culturally appropriative, so I wouldn't say that. Uh, but but you know, yes, it's um, say Patronus yes, instead. Yeah, Ru- <laughs> Muse. Yes, yeah. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is my Patronus. Take I, that for what you will. Uh, that will be the title of this episode, <laughs> and I'll make sure to attribute that quote to you everywhere I can. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. Does this fight? The subpoena fight, the game of subpoenas, like my intern said I should write. Uh, does this get resolved before the 2020 election? Or does this become uh, one of the main issues for when the presidential election comes around next November? Alex S. In the game of subpoenas, you win or you lie. <laughs> well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> You if it's anything like the Game of Thrones, internet. it's going to last seven years too long. <laughs> oh. Which is about time when we'll get to, you know, the actual conclusion of the Trump presidency. Yeah. It's probably going to be underwhelming. Unfortunately. Yeah. No, I mean. Will I Trump be that... dead by then? <laughs> um, I hope not. What, whatever I would say would be wishful thinking. So I'm going to keep my mouth oh, shut. Jeez. That All right. That's disgusting. Um, yeah, so, hey, I didn't I didn't say pro or con. Um, I. We all know what you mean. I, yeah, sure. I, I think so much for the tolerant left. <laughs> Trump is going to outlive all of us. Trump will be 200 years old sitting underneath the White House in the bunker, alive and well, with a 180-year-old baron at his side. Well, they say that if you leave a block of Velveeta cheese in a dump, <laughs> it will not deteriorate. Mm-hmm. And I think that Donald Trump is at least 75% Velveeta cheese. The other 25% is McDonald's hamburger meat, which also right. does not decay. That's right. That's right. Trump is only a couple years younger than me, so I don't know if I like this talk about mortality. Mike, they'll have the finest scalp surgeons mm-hmm. in the bunker. Does uh, But this doesn't get resolved before 2020. What are the? Is there any chance that it gets resolved before 2020? I, I think that that's very unlikely. Uh, this is going to get, like we said, tied up in courts. It's going to be something that you know they're going to fight tooth and nail at every at every step. Um, and you know what? I mean, if it does get dragged out, like this is probably I I. Well, I think it's an open question of whether it will whether it will help or hurt Donald Trump in the 2020 elections. I think there is an equal possibility that it could go both ways. He has been kind of a master of marshalling his own personal controversies as uh, evidence that he is marginalized uh, by the powers that be. So, I mean, there is there is the possibility that he could spin that into something positive for himself. But at the same time, I do think that there is not a negligible possibility that he could be turning off potential, you know, centrist or uh, moderate Republicans who, you know, are hopefully at this point seeing through the sort of absurd corruption that has uh, been the hallmark of his presidency and the other hallmark of that presidency has been his you know just relentless nomination of judges to the circuit courts that share his ideology and that of more conservative americans which will also you know help him in the cases before they get to the supreme court because he may be sitting in line with precedents that are just overwhelmingly in his favor sounds like a sound strategy uh, so Trump Something will win. Something literally been in the works since day one. Yes. So given the, given the, uh, how do I say, incompetence of the Democratic leadership, uh, it's a good word. They, so Trump is going to be the president again. I I don't think that the Democratic leadership overall supports a strategy of pursuing impeachment. I think that Donald Trump winning the you know Republican nomination in the eventual 2020 election is going to be based off the Democrats nominating a centrist candidate and hoping to win over white suburban voters and that strategy not working again as we saw uh, it play out in the 2016 election. I think it's we're just due for a rinse repeat and then if any impeachment is going to take place, it would have to be uh, you know after the 2022 election and taking Congress back again. 
I agree. I think at this point it's Democrats' election to lose. And they will. And they will. (laughs) Thank you for joining us today on the Mike Laughlin Group. Join us again next week for more hard-hitting, hard-headed conversations. This is a very good character. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Fine. The little piece for a while, like, I had to like, put my shit together because I was just like, I had my like, job. It never came up, but I was going to talk about how they're trained in Ikea, like Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> Every day we wake up at 6 a.m. for Russian Sambo. And like, oh, hey guys, how's it going?